Well, yes, a settlement doesn't mean an admission of guilt, but for someone like Diddy who is known not to pay his people, it's very telling. Y'all already know what time it is, I got the black bean neck on. This is the fastest settlement that we have ever probably seen in our lifetimes. Like this happened very quickly. And you know what? Shout out to Cassie and her team and her attorneys for handling this because they were on it. From the way this story dropped, the way it came out, it came out from notable media companies, like notable websites, articles dropping from the Associated Press, the New York Times, like this was dropped quickly. It wasn't no messiness, no Instagram blog type of stuff. It was real deal, like, hey girl, we already have the stuff written up. There's no need to head to these other outlets. We got it. All the, the, all the details from the lawsuit are in here. Get into it. It was so fast paced. It was very calculated. And I don't blame Cassie's team for doing it this way because you are going against someone like Diddy who is very like powerful and has some like has some coin. He's more powerful than most to be able to do things to keep him from, you know, a, a, a facing any type of accountability. And him paying this money is the way for him to not deal with three, four years or however long this will drag out. Because I'm telling y'all now, had this went to trial, Diddy's brand as we know it would have been completely gone. I'm telling you now, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, especially we're coming off of Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. The general public just does not have the capacity right now to deal with another situation like this. But it's very, <laughs> the ways in which we keep seeing hip hop moguls and folks in the industry consistently being called out for things like this, it's in the culture. It's in the culture and it's even in the culture that we consume the music and stuff. Like, it's bad. And it's been going on for years and I don't think it won't stop. Don't stop. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon because this is a part of the culture. There's been whispers about Diddy and his things for a while. The fact that Diddy was able to get in a relationship with Cassie at that young age while managing her career and whatever she was... The, the fact that that was allowed. And then we'll hear people who blame victims continuously, like in the R. Kelly case where people were blaming the parents for pushing the kids towards R. Kelly and not holding the abuser accountable. Like they were not holding R. Kelly like, yes, the parents might have been doing some inappropriate things, but the person who holds the purse, the person who owns, owns the coin and has the resources and stuff are preying on folks without. We have to always remember that. Like this is a person in a position of power who has money and people will do things to get money. It doesn't make them think. We do not get the chance to think about the implications of capitalism because we're always working to survive. Like the very fact that a lot of us are working 40 plus hours a week and still not making ends meet. How can we sit up here and, and think that other folks are not doing other things to be able to survive? And people in positions of power are holding that, holding that wealth and that, and that money and those resources, making us do stupid stuff all the time. We are working eight hours a day to be able to pay bills. A lot of us are working a lot of hours to be able to pay bills, the basic things, and it's still not enough while companies are bringing in billions and billions of dollars. And that is stupid. But we do it. So at the end of the day, the money is the thing that is causing all of these things. And the people who have more money have more power to be able to make folks who do not have do things. We have to remember that. We have to remember that when we're talking about this. So I am not feeling any way about Cassie doing her big one. I'm not mad at Cassie saying, hey, I'm going to settle. I'm taking this money. I'm not going to court. It is what it is. We reached a settlement. Like, I want to move on with my life. Thank you so much. Diddy released his statement. And then his attorney released another statement saying that, hey, no way are we admitting guilt because at the end of the day, I'm telling you those attorneys told Diddy, hey, sister, this is not looking good. The money that you're about to pay this woman 
it's going to be insignificant compared to the money and resources you're going to lose in the next couple years if this continues to drag out. Because they were eating Diddy up online. Like, and this was day one. Day one. Imagine going to trial and things dripping and dripping and dripping, steady coming out, and things being confirmed. Things being confirmed, like people having to come and speak. Because Cassie was naming folks that are still alive, who still have some connections to Diddy, who they would have to get on the stand and they would have to sing. And some of them are going to feel like, some of them are going to sing. Some of them are going to sing. And I'm telling you, these attorneys, they, they, they ain't working to, to get the truth. They working to protect their client the best way they can. So I'm telling you, they told Diddy like, hey, just go ahead and pay the money. And there's been reports, none of it's been verified because both parties have not released anything out like the details of the settlement. But some people are speculating it could be close to $100 million. Now, I don't know if it's $100 million, but I would not be surprised if it was 30 or close to it or a little bit above 30. After having a really good conversation with uh, Jada, thank you, Jada. I really enjoyed our conversation today. She's an attorney out in D.C. She was explaining to me the history of the abuse and the time. Like this happened when she was 19. So this is years of things. The trafficking got brought up, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the drug stuff like, and I have read a lot of articles and heard from people who, have, who work in this, in this field who have said that when it comes to stuff like this, the jury are going to side with the victim. Like stuff like this, they're going to side with the victim. They're going to side with the victim, period, because they, they'll see themselves as the victim. It doesn't always happen, but it was an uphill battle for Diddy. Diddy was going to have to shell out a lot more money, so this was actually a discount for him, to be honest. Because had this continued to go on, he would also have to pay lawyers. Honestly, this was a discount. No matter how much money that Cassie got, I guarantee you it was a discount. And I'm not here for the conversations of folks saying that... Cassie wanted to cash. She wanted to cash out like it was all about money. Victims deserve every penny, period. Point blank, period. I don't blame Cassie for not going to court. Like folks are saying, well, she should have took it to court. We want to justice. Justice is for the victim. You all do not want justice for the victim. You want tea. A lot of us wanted tea. We wanted to see what was happening, we wanted to see this drag out the same way it happened with Megan and Tory Lanez. How that went on for two or three years and how that changed Megan forever. Not even just the initial abuse of her being shot. It was the continuation of these trials and these conversations and stuff going on. Like that happened in 2020. Like imagine this, this is a way bigger scale because this is, Cassie, at 19 years old, she would have to have told a story. The attorneys would have to told a story from 19 to 36. Or however old she was when she stopped talking to Diddy and how she struggled getting out. Well, she's alleging that struggled getting out of this relationship with Diddy. Imagine hearing these stories. It would have been the end all for Diddy. It would have been... And, and honestly, I would have liked to see the end all of Diddy because I do not think Diddy is a good person at all. I think his reckoning will probably come eventually, but at the same time, I have respect for the victim because this is not about, you know, what's the name of the, the, the abuser. This is about the victim getting what they think they deserve. This was a civil case. It has to be a certain amount of money for it to be considered federal. And I think it was around like $75,000. I think anything over $75,000 is considered like federal. So no one has been charged. Diddy has not been charged. It's not any charge. This is a civil matter. This is a civil case that is happening in the federal courthouse. I need folks to understand it. That's why it's so important for us as, um, you know, whoever are bloggers, people who are giving um, commentary on this, um, like influence or whoever, we cannot continue to engage in conversations like this and tea time and whatever. Like we really have to do our work and we have to lean into the folks who are on the ground doing the research. So I appreciate even the person I spoke to, Jita, who is an attorney, who gave me a lot of insight. And also uh, Megan with the Bob, who we know for talking about the Tory Lanez trial. 
Like I appreciate them doing the work because they do matter. Like they're out here, they've been doing it for the longest. Shout out to Megan Conniff who did a video discussing some of this and she talked about like, hey, these resources are available for free. Like this is like federal, this is happening in New York. Here are the links to find this stuff. So we have, you know, Instagram blogs posting the, the, the pictures and stuff and putting their uh, logos and stuff on it. It's like, hey girl, this is, available for the public like this is not no exclusive stuff like post it put it out but they're not interested in actually doing a story they're trying to get all of the coin from it and y'all are not getting any coin from these instagram blogs no shade y'all are not a lot of them are not making any money which is why a lot of instagram blogs have those bull crap um ads all on their stuff like girl but i again do not blame cassie for getting the money um aubrey o'day girl you're a white woman Stay in your place. This is a black woman who's experiencing stuff, who had experienced stuff, um, and she deserves whatever compensation she thinks is fair for herself. I want to talk about why Diddy settled. I know I talked about it a little bit, but Diddy settled this out of court because it would have dragged on and it would have, it would have completely ended him. Like, this is the reason why he settled. And now we're seeing the damage control because now we've seen pictures that TMZ have gotten uh, Diddy at whatever house he's at, looking sad. The PR is already starting. The PR is already starting. Um, and we've never seen Diddy like this. We've never seen Diddy sad to this type of level. The only sadness that we've seen from Diddy was the funeral and stuff for Kim Porter. And that is kind of no shade. Not photo ops, but this is kind of performative, like you expect that, da da da, like, you know, this is a service, da, da, like, we expect this, but something like this, we've never seen, like, Dr. Love, good energy, and all this, like, it's all love out here, but you're the most vicious person, like, known. Like, you have to portray yourself to be the love and all that other stuff because you are not a loving person. Um, and there's been whispers and rumors about Diddy for the longest. Um, and Diddy, no, Diddy ain't stupid. I guarantee you this clocked his pockets. I guarantee you, for folks who are saying Diddy is a billionaire, Diddy is not no damn billionaire like that. I'm telling you, this hurt his pockets. If Diddy was really, really coined up like this, he would have never made it to this point to be gunned. If Diddy was really a billionaire and he was coined up like this, he would have been took care of this a while back. Like these folks, these, these folks are inflating their wealth. Like they are inflating their wealth. I definitely think Diddy has money but I guarantee you he had to make some moves to, to get this money out for this. I guarantee you. And the fact that he had to pay this, and now his name has to be repaired. He's not going to be able to do any big things. He's not going to be able to make appearances, do stuff like he is going to have to go into solitude for a while. And this is why we're seeing the beginning of him looking sad, because I guarantee you, Diddy or his team contacted some paparazzi and had them come shoot this, this photo. I would not be surprised. Yes, it's a chance that they got it, but no, no. Diddy got enough resources to make sure ain't nobody seeing him. He wanted to be shown, like I'm telling his team. This is all PR because it's play, it plays on our emotions. Someone asked me on Twitter, why would Diddy go and have paparazzi come and take pictures of him? Again, because we've never seen Diddy look sad. Like, we all have empathy for people who are showing signs of emotion. Like, it happens. If you ever watched a movie or a TV show or something, and something happens to a character, you feel that. Even though you know that this is not real, we are empathetic as human beings. As much as we want to pretend like we're not, we are very much that. Which is why it affects our mental health to see some of the things that we see on our timeline a lot like a lot of stuff that we consume, it messes with our mental health. So we're empathetic, like that's how we communicate with each other. So seeing Diddy like that makes us feel like, wow, like even though he is wrong and I wanna drag him, it's a little bit of, you know what, he feels bad, like he going through it. Like people are saying, oh yeah, he going through it. What is he going through? Ask yourself, what is he going through? Having to pay off a victim that he harmed? Think about that, because that was the, the response that everybody was saying. Oh, he's going through it right now. That hurt. Like, and folks are, folks are joking about it, saying, oh, he's going through it. He, them pockets are hurting. But there's still some level of empathy for him. And that happens. Like, that's what happens when you see folks go through things like this. 
the image of the the, the, um, the person who is being sued or whatever has to be changed. We've seen plenty of influencers, YouTubers over the years come in front of the camera, tell uh, us that they're sorry for things. They're always no makeup, frizzy hair. They're in their natural state like they just woke up because if you go and you get your nails done and you get your makeup, it's given performative. And they know that, they know how it looks like. You can't look like you're going through it because a person who's going through it, how we see that is a person who doesn't look good. You can't be going through it and still look bad. You can't, you can't do that. The same way where if you show up and get any type of federal assistance or government assistance like food stamps or whatever, you can't dress up because sometimes folks gonna look at you and say, oh, you can't be hurting. You dressed up. It's like, girl, I had this before I needed this assistance. So what's going on? Like I had this before and I need assistance now, but you have to look like you're going through it for folks to feel empathetic. Sometimes it works, sometimes it makes things worse than what it was. Um, and Diddy is playing into this. I'm telling y'all like Diddy has resources like the attorneys probably are talking to other folks, PR folks, talking to psychologists, all the other stuff. What needs to be done? These folks have been doing it so long because Diddy's attorney is an own attorney. Like, I think if I'm not mistaken, he was the one that um, defended, um, what's his name? I can't think of the white man, child. It's so many of you, you can't even think. But, like, Diddy has the right team and the right folks to be able to tell him how to move. And I'm telling you, this is a part of this. Also, Diddy had to spend a lot of money on the lawyer fees, drawing this all out. It just, it, this was a discount. This was a discount, and I don't blame Cassie at all. Um, we have to remember victims in this moment. This is not tea time. This is someone's actual life, someone's abuse. Cassie has lost her years. She has lost her teen years to someone who was supposed to be helping her career, but was desiring her and abusing her and wanting her. And Diddy is that person. Like, he's been talked about for that for a minute. Now, a lot of folks are starting to bring Young Miami, Carisha into the conversation and saying, well, Miami, Young Miami has been very quiet. I'm actually glad that Young Miami has been very quiet. I hope she's taking the time. And I hope Diddy team is considering her, which they're probably not. Like, they're probably not because Carisha can't help Diddy right now. Like, Young Miami cannot help Diddy right now because the same way that Diddy was with Cassie, that youth, and him having a desirable woman next to him to make him look young and fresh, Diddy is damn near 60 years old. There's nothing that Carisha can do right now, like in the, like in the court of public opinion, because that's what matters, because public opinion and public folks are the ones spending money. That's why they care what we think. As much as they want to say they don't care, we are the ones spending money keeping them wealthy. So they do care what we think because now, I don't want to see Diddy on my screen. Folks are deleting songs and people are taking him off of uh, like pictures. I think Janet Jackson removed him from a picture or whatever. Like That's what's happening right now. And we see these celebrities doing it and we're going to move too. Some of us, not all of us, but some of us will. But Young Miami should be quiet right now. She should be very, very quiet. And she should be very calculated right now. She's not going to get her here and laugh because Young Miami doesn't have like a lot to lose. Young Miami is more vulnerable than Diddy in this situation because her association with this man who's been called out for this stuff now damages her brand. Diddy will be okay. He will be fine. Like, yeah, he might lose a lot of pocket. He'll still be fine because he's not going to jail or anything, but he's going to lose a significant amount of money like if things were go to go bad, but Carisha ain't got that type of, she ain't got that type to, leave, to lose. And reminds us that you are not benefiting from patriarchy. Like you're not benefiting from that. Yes, oh yeah, this man tricking on me, he's spending all the money, da, da, da. And now he's about to discard you because he cannot be a, I do not see Young Miami, I don't see it. I don't, I think they're gonna have to stay far apart. I think Young Miami should distance herself completely from this. I think that she probably won't. I think she probably won't. Uh, but Young Miami should be very, very quiet right now uh, because it's not heterosexual men who are hyping you up. It is gay men who are hyping you up and it's a lot of women, a lot of black women. 
And yes, there are some black women and some gay men who are trash when it comes to believing victims. But a lot of them do. And they are not going to be here for Carisha, Young Miami, if she gets out and says something stupid. They are not. And Young Miami knows she cannot deal with the comments and the backlash. She knows she can't. So mentally, she should shut up. She ain't gonna say, she ain't gonna say nothing. But it's also interesting here in DJ Academic Shade, Young Miami, in this situation saying, oh, you ain't said nothing, you been quiet, when there's videos of you talking about talking to young girls. Like, there's audio you saying in the interview. So you might want to shut up too. Uh, like, girl, it's just how you dragging her and, what, hello, hello? But yes, um, this whole ordeal, sad. I'm glad that Cassie was able to get what she wanted because at the end of the day, it's for her. I do not like how folks are trying to turn this into a cash grab or whatever um, because at the end of the day, this is someone who has experienced something from the age of 19 to whatever age. Like this is years and years of things. Some of the stuff that's been talked about is a lot like introducing someone to drugs and, and stuff and like that's not cool that's not that's not cool and I, and I believe everything that she said um, I believe everything so girl we will see what will happen next are other folks probably going to come forward and say something who knows um, I don't think they will be as successful as Cassie was I think there's also a conversation just to show you to show how we see victims um, and how fast folks were able to believe things that they will not do other black women. And I think that's a conversation about desire um, and a lot of other things. Um, but I think it's also is that a lot of folks know that Diddy has done some messed up stuff and it's normalized. Like it's just a joke. Um, you have Joe Budden laughing and saying, I don't have nothing to say. You got old clips of other rappers and stuff who, who said some stuff and it's just, it's just normalized uh, because these folks do not care as long as they are in access to money and wealth and being associated with you know these things like they want to be celebrities and they'll do whatever like celebrities would do everything they can to remain celebrities um and that's the nature of the beast sadly um i hope y'all have enjoyed the conversation i hope that we think about our comments on victims and how they choose to get justice i think we really need to think about the way we respond and how we are asking for entertainment in the ways of someone's abuse or trauma. It's not cool. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.